Greetings there everyone and welcome back to Equestria War. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and we are still doing the Realm of Kyria. And we're still doing, of course, Radiant Prosperity, which doesn't have a description currently, but like I said in the last three episodes, this is still preview build. We'll see um, what the final update really is, or when this gets fully updated for everybody. So I'm very excited for it, because there's many, many paths for us to go down uh, for the Realm of Kyria. Many paths to succeed through the three and a half year... Uh, Grand Gallop Onward uh, event. Or you can fail it too, and you can still have other paths that way as well. But right now, I'm getting a little more concerned as everyone's killing each other here. Um, and we have the Roman Kaiserat. So, Kaiser Augustus Umboki. So, they have a generic focus tree, but I'm very interested in that one. <clears throat> so, curious economic growth creates inequality and poverty. Oh god. Same situation as in Kieran.201 ab above. We must implement government policies to create a social safety net, robust welfare services, to combat poverty and thus the entire sustainability of Kira's rapid economic growth by making sure the workers stay content, healthy, and docile. Happy workforce is a productive work and responsible uh, or, uh, workforce. A, a strong response from the state affirming our responsibility and harmonic governments, funded by taxes on the bosses and the corporations. We don't want the workers to rise up. Oh boy. That hurts us. Because we still want to go back here to extend the high synth cord. Or maybe getting rid of alter, alter, alternating the deal. The area of uh, area, the era of radiant prosperity. Three and a half years ago, the Grand Gallop onward seemed to be an impossible dream. The naive optimism of a matriarch and a premier, who had essentially no real experience in governing our or economics between the two of them. And yet, as matriarch superior Rancher and declared in Vermilion today, the Grand Gallop onward has been a stunning success. Golden and crimson banners hang from every window and balcony in the realm today as a care to celebrate the fruits of their impossible labor since the end of the silence. Schools, factories, and armories run rise alongside ancient temples and sandalwood plantations, demonstrating the delicate but determined balance between tradition and modernization that the realm has struck in these past few years. And while much work remains to be done, the foundations lay for a bright future in Kyria. Rain Trans address to the realm was broadcast live via radio as far away as Sorghum, and in a few years, new radio relays may allow the voice of the matriarch to reach as far as the Chrysanthemum and Verdant. For now, though. Um, <clears throat> Those cities, though jubilant in celebrations, will have to wait for the words of the matriarch to arrive. I am proud of each and every Kieran who played their part, however small, in laying the silence to rest and ushering us into a prosperous future. The mistakes of the past can never be forgotten, but here today we have proven that they can't be undone. I am proud to declare the beginning of a new era for Rome, the era of radiant prosperity. Kyria is in bloom. A new Kieran army. Ooh. Gains dynamic modifier, the Vermilion and Kieran army, which grants dynamic bonuses to land combat, air, naval, and military modifiers. Thousand banner system conscription law may not be changed. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's pretty good too. River Riverine Reavers, new Army General Staff. Well, that's not bad either. Winglet Consortium, huh? Banner Kieran and Cadres. Ooh, di division experience gain. Divi experience soldiers' losses goes down. Strategic denial decisions executes scorched earth operations in selected states. Interesting. These are all very good, but we don't really need to have them yet. <coughs> So if you want to read this again like we read last time, please go ahead. But Kieran Consocialism. My bad. The party popularity of United for Harmony, the non-aligned forum, Kieran Awoken, or the right alliance will never fall below 15%. Okay, interesting. State under Secretariat for Fire Control. Well, we'll get this one. The new Kieran political sphere is broken up into incompatible factions loyal to their relig religion, regional strongholds. By structuring the government around balancing and mediating with these fractions, we can ensure cooperation at the expense of traditional majoritarian principles. Interesting. So let's see what this one does. We still have all this other stuff we can do too, and we still want to show the skyfall. Throw into the ivory tower. If I may begin, Miss Bloom, I am confused, began the chair Kieran. Mayflower Bloom what was before the imposing central committee of the Al-Kira con uh, Collegium, apparent appealing the rejection of a research proposal by one of the ethics committees. The chair Kieran continued. Her proposal is very well polished and disturbing. Setting aside the question of whether this collegium would ever approve of what seems to be nothing short of a eugenics program, I'm troubled by her methodology. You suggest intentionally inducing a neurotransformation transformation for study. Mayflower stiffened. She had honestly expected to be grilled on this eugenics first. Yes, Chair. Proving the connection between neurotransformations transformations and heredity, and demonstrating that the greater or, less, or lesser inclinations towards their neurotics halves can be inherited is the first step in the broader project of... She was made cut off by the chair, who was starting to realize it had already made up his mind. Yes, your aspirations to breathe the New York State out of the population are more than clear. 
My concern again is with your methodology, excluding completely that forcing an indirect transformation amounts to psychological torture. Just how do you expect the Collegium to defend itself when the religious authorities get word that we're funding this? We hardly have the prestige of the Aurelian or Aurelian monastery to protect us. Your proposal will get this institution shuttered. Mayflower opened her mouth to reply, but the session ardently surged forth without her. A motion to reject her appeal was introduced and passed before she could say a word, and soon she was born or had been ushered from the hall to her waiting friend, Lil River Lily. Oh, so I heard everything, Mayflower. I'm so sorry. River Lily tried to hug Mayflower, but the mayor shrugged her off, hanging her head low. I know that the proposal is really important to you, but it doesn't have to be the end of your research. You just need to try again, but first, you need to get some fresh air. Clear your head. You need to get out and see the countryside before you spend another minute working on this New York business. It's just not healthy. I can't show my face here, any, here anytime soon, so I guess some sunshine can't hurt, I guess. Make sure you get the thing to pop up, right? Ah, better artillery, good. Because we don't want to use pre-industrial artillery. That would be very, 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 very bad. Altering the deal. Autumn blaze. Cringe as he finished her plea to the plenum only to be drowned out by a chorus of unhappy voices. She had taken to the stand, asked for the plenum support, and extending the highest sense accords with Equestria, a deal that had been very helpful in funding the three and a half year plan so far, but was deeply unpopular with the Fickle's current rising suns and winter's frost cliques. Now, after arguing that a renewal of the accords would give Kiria more funding and more resources to successfully finish the plan, she found herself met with nothing short of a revolt by the other parties in the plenum. You give Equestria a greater share of her resources, a greater control of our nation's wealth, a greater influence in the lives of every Kieran in this country, Fickle Current asked her. Our material wealth is precious to us, and when a nation has nothing left, it has at least the resources within its own lands. Will it not be turned into beggars at the question table? I will not stand for it. And neither will I, Winterfrost cut in. We're nations supported by the st strength of our faith in Concord and the Way of Fire. What we are lacking is not material tools, but faith. The question is not worship Concord. They do not believe in the Way of Fire. How are we supposed to create a righteous nation if we stray from the divine will of our goddess to do so? I will see the Reform Bureau or com Compradors selling Kyria out to grow work off foreign money, Rising Sun asked, or said. Staring down in her muzzle autumn, you ignore the well-being of the common care for abstract economic gain and justified in the, using it in the Matrix plan. We're not sacrificing anything, Autumn protested. We're exchanging something we have plenty of, of or something we have little of. The questions are honest, forthcoming, and reasonable. The Reform Bureau has already made great progress on the preliminary talks. The terms of questions offer us are generous and honest. They favor us more than they, fa they favor them. Do not turn your backs on help that we need because we're too proud to take it. But Autumn Blaze could, not do no could do nothing now. She could tell that the current in the planet had already made up their minds. As delegates left their seats to cast their votes and a scribe talk tally them up, Autumn could only nod on her hoods and worry and hope that she had been persuasive enough to sell the deal. The Plenum votes to protect her sovereignty. Votes to further uh, Equestrian aid. Ooh. You know what? We're not going to go with Equestria, or this try not to. Um, so, I'm going to go with that one. Oh boy. Ah, go and do that one, why not? Railways? I just don't want you to do anything that we would not have. Uh, let's try with the Skyfall? Yeah, I think that'd be pretty good to do. I mean, this is all good stuff to do and all, but what, like... I need rail lines, but I want a better economy. Nice. A constitutional monarchy? Skyfall accepts? Great! There we go. That's looking better already. <clears throat> Consociationalism. A constitutional matriarch. Or matriarch eight. Centuries of rule by decree from Vermilion came to a formal and complete end today with a final unfettered decree from matriarch superior reign, already for several years. She granted her prerogative and authority to the plenum, the premier and the morning secretariat, but today she vested that power in them permanently and bound herself and all future matriarchs by the constitution of the Rome of Kyria, making the rare decision to proclaim this decree herself in the capital. Rainshine said simply that a new century brings with it a new reality, and I will not out of pride deny my subjects the freedom to govern themselves already enjoyed by so many of the world's nations. As matriarch superior, I am tasked with guiding Kieran Kind to peace and prosperity, and I feel that the morning secretary and the premier will bring both of these things to Kyria. On the subject of the premier, Autumn Blaze resigned her office immediately before it was abolished by the matriarch's decree in the new constitution. Following the matriarch's proclamation, the morning secretary met to choose the first democratically elected premier of Kyria, and in light of her success in leading the country through the grand gallop onward, chose to elect Autumn Blaze to a five-year term. A new dawn for harmony in the morning secretariat. Add range on matriarch superior of Kyria, division recovery rate. Cool. State Undersecretariat for Fire Control. Pluri Jurisdictional dev Devolution. Replaces the all Kieran Plenum for National Revival. D dynamic Bonifier with the National Plenum of the Provinces. Select a state on the map to view the state actions. Establish a provincial dynamic in each of the realm of, of Kyria's 29 core states. <coughs> state 
standard bearers of the Constitution. Huh? Ooh, updated sector. I want to get this one. Building the factories across Kyria. Oh, apprise the Akiran tail. Long live the matriarch. Keepers of the balance. Oh, I want to get down there. I guess we'll do this one. Un State unto Secretariat for the fire control. The Grand Gallop on caught us up with modernity, but modernity has its issues. Inequities breed... Inequalities breed discontent. And discontent is inspiring a streak of Nyrk attacks. Us until we can address these social issues, we need a modern, sophisticated Nyrk suppression force. Interesting. I'm excited like a naval person here, too. Combo rating is not bad. Speed is not bad. Invasion speed combo rating. Um, you know what? I never go with speed. Let's go with speed for this one. We don't need naval experience as much, but still. Oh, the firecracker, nice. We're really out of guns, though, so. That's alright. Still making 11 a day. It's still not bad. Of cunts. Socialism. And. Concordance democracy. Though perhaps no one would have predicted it, Autumn Blades have proved either a particularly shrewd or unreasonably lucky state smear. The single thing that all the competing factions of the Mooring Secretary could agree on is their nervousness about being dominated by the other factions, perhaps. Taking advantage of this fear, Autumn Blades have convinced all the major national political parties to agree to a complex and comprehensive power sharing agreement. The future of Kira is not, it seems, a majoritarian democracy, but a delicate balance of regional political interests and the guarantee that the Mooring Secretariat can never be dominated by a single, single popular party. Well, some have already begun to criticize this new consocialist uh, government as permanently entrenching the elites of the parties already represented in the Secretariat. It cannot be denied that these complex power sharing agreements have held to will be an important backstop against the kind of factional and regional rivalries that threaten to upend the Grand Gallop forward in the three and a half year plan. Hope this would calm the last few fire tempers in the Secretariat. Okay, so we have this one it's Mayflower Bloom, the Nyrick Threat. Peace is as a hibiscus blossom, beautiful before day, the fool mourns his passing, the wise tend the garden. My studies on the New York State so far have been largely theoretical, and with the Collegium's rejection, will probably remain theoretical for, for the foreseeable future. Their fears about inducing a New York State intentionally are understandable, but they can't understand that the thing they fear so much is precisely the thing I'm trying to prevent with the research. Yes, there's a little flame around the door, but the whole house will be ablaze shortly, even better that we escape now with merely blistering hooves and perish in the coming inferno. Noctulus and Charm do not impose a silence over a few peasants going Nyrick or Nyrick and scorching their rice patties. The pre silence literature is clear the changes brought to Kira by the coming of modernity created social and class conflicts that inspired mass outbreaks of Nyrick never before seen. Kira repent of fury over years of perceived injustice can sustain the Nyrick state for hours, days, and in a few cases even easily reignite again and again in Stalingrad. These drives cause revolution in Kira. They nearly put the entire realm to the torch, nearly destroying the Kiran kind. No Kira. Can deny the, gra the grand gallop onward. Has been a surprising success, but it's hardly the cure for all ills that Autumn Blaze would have think. They are hungry Kieran and exploited Kieran, have Kieran and have not Kieran. And there are already protests and disturbances daily across the realm. I'm certain that the presence and power of the Matrix Superior was the sole reason the Grand Gallop onward itself did not inspire a mass near revolt of the kind we saw before the silence, yet Autumn Blaze's new socialism now removes the possibility of there being any decisive authoritative voice that could calm the whole country at once. Without the power of the old monarchy or single dominant faction, our only safeguard will be that she does not attempt to pass anything unpopular with the other parties in this power sharing agreement or arrangement, which is no safeguard at all. Kyria is being pulled in a dozen directions. Armaments and socialists, traditionalists, reformists, national patriots, religious fundamentalists, it doesn't matter who is on top. It matters that the conflict between these groups will be our doom unless we can solve the near problem for good. Our only hope is that it can be bred out of the population over time. This con socialism is too much too weak to impose such a policy and sustain it. If Kieran can to survive, we need a strong realm, a unified realm. One that can do the unpleasant thing now to uh, secure a safe, unscorched future for Kyria. Autumn Blaze is not going to provide that kind of leadership, and I don't want to say idly viable or anemic government ball fails to take action, but what can I possibly do? Plur Jurisdictional Devolution A new system of provincial diets will allow us to increase local autonomy and offer some olive branches to regional radicals, and by reducing the power of the Secretariat, will also lower the stakes of the national elections. Cool. Yeah, because we definitely need more guns here. Oof. We need a little more steel as well, but we'll see. Coming along nicely, very, very nicely, even though we want more divisions. Yeah, we only have two at a time, which is not good. And the, I guess they're only 22 combo with, which is not great, but still. Still. Hey, two political power deads, really good though. <clears throat> you 
lose 5% consumer goods. We're at, what, 7.5% uh, recruitable population? Yeah. I don't speed game's good, though. Uh, Kira's economic growth creates inequality and poverty. Slums and shanty towns and cities populated by rural migrants working for low wages. Central government policies not be caught up to the new reality, so there's no safety net for the growing urban underclass. Even though under the silence, the level of inequality was not so severe, then everyone was poor, but had a roof over their heads and enough to eat a simple life. Now the conditions in the urban slums are horrible, overcrowding, disease, starvation, immense poverty, increasing discontent, while a few streets away there are parties and banquets of a newly rich industrial bourgeoisie, class struggle fermenting to the disadvantage of all, but the way of the fire can step in. A benevolent association is funded by charitable donations of the pious, well-to-do, and staffed by the mystics and volunteer laity. They can plug the gap, but left by inadequate governmental social programs, a new compassionate faith that reaffirms harmony and compassion between Karen, a way for the rich to lend a helping hoof to the poor, trickle down. A cheap price to pay to pay save off worker revolution. God dang it. The Amiant Few. Regardless of their motivations, grievances, or beliefs, arsonists are criminals. The spat of arson attacks perpetuated by the groups such as Red Angry Fire will not be tolerated by the Matrix government, which is why the Premier has tasked me with heading the Under Secretariat for Fire Control to coordinate our efforts to suppress both the fires and those that start them. Our professional firefighting brigades will partner with volunteer fire departments across the country to suppress both accidental and neurotransformations transformations and the un unexcusable bout of attacks. The Kieran given this press conference was grizzled and old, and the reporters in the room all had concluded or included in their notes his prior service with border militias of the western provinces. Quite the sound of places in charge of the newest Kieran's internal security forces. Who shot up from the crowd? Under Secretary Redwood, the reporter began. What do you have to say about the new Reform Bureau report indicating that most New York attacks were rash from social inequality? Do you think it's appropriate to send military police after a downtrodden Kieran? The Undersecretary gave an indignant huff. Social inequality is not an excuse to burn down those homes, businesses, schools, farms, all of which have been attacked. If Karen have complaints about Kira's run, then they ought to petition to the matriarch or her premier. If they want to throw a tantrum and burn the country down, they're going to have to get through me. Let's keep your temper in check. The fifth, first iteration of Firefighting do Operations Doctrine issued by the State Undersecretariat for Fire Controls to its primary field force, the number 268 Fire Control Rapid Response Brigade, allowed for the limited use of artillery to aid the quelling of conflagrations of a severity equal to fire severity index S, uh, at level 3 or above. Artillery bombardment with high explosive shells will be authorized as a means of quickly cleaning or clearing large swaths of combustible vegetation to create a fire break in the path of a significant bushfire or wildfire. <laughs> War comes and the fire hearted. Look to swords while the temperate soul fashions a heavy shield. Right, before we do that one. So this is a fire control division. 18 convoy, that's not bad. Oh, they're actually motorized. Oh, the field hospitals, that's actually really cool. Artificer Company, huh. Lily River. River Lily's insistence that I leave my work behind and tour the realm may have seemed foolish at first, but I have to admit the fresh air has been nice and the new trains and roads are a testament to the success of the three and a half year plan, unfortunately. Everywhere I've been so far, these technological successes have only made it easier for me to see our social and economic failures. We've been masked up for a few days, and I've found the town disagreeably rough and militaristic. There are drunken cadets on leave from their training everywhere, causing mischief in the seedier districts of the city. And not to say that I'm looking forward to leaving, though the River Lily says she's been some business that may keep us here for a good while. It was a parade today that I found deeply disturbing for, for two reasons. The new state undersecretariat for the fire control is showing off its first armored firefighting formations. Unofficially, as everyone in the realm surely knows, this is Kira's new rapid response force of New York outbreaks. Seeing the level of militarization that a simple fire brigade has, I have to say that I'm torn. On one hoof, the side of firefighting cadets with body armor, tanks, and artillery is comforts me to know that even Autumn Blaze is not so naive to think that we can simply ignore the potential for a mass New York transformation, but at the same time. It is the height of naivety she believes that her, her harmonist consultionalism will survive the first incident where this new fire brigade has to bomb and bayonet co co some Kieran who goes near it in opposition to these policies. I was watching the parade, I was accosted by two street urchins who were jeering and making faces at the firefighters. When they noticed me, they trotted over and began to cause troubles. First, they introduced themselves as a sudden fire and prairie blades, and they said they were with a group called the Angry Red Fire. Or it might have been the Angry Red Fire. I wasn't paying too much attention at first. I asked them why they were jeering at the firefighters, and they started explaining that the Angry Red Fire, a Red Angry Fire, wants to burn all of Kira down. I can't tell they're just two hooligans having some fun or they're really part of some group, but they started saying things about other protests and riots and arson across Kira that the Red Angry Fire supposedly has a hoof in. They started talking about how they think Autumn Blaze is a traitor for selling out to Equestria. And how they want to burn down while she's built so a new impure Kira can rise from the ashes or something like that. I left pretty quickly after that and they seemed to like how uncomfortable I looked. I mean, Autumn Blaze might be too optimistic for my taste, but she's no traitor and after meeting these Red Angry Fire urchins, Still on the fact that she's given the fire brigades, tanks, and artillery doesn't seem quite naive either. Cool. 
the constitutional standard bearers. I must protect a new constitution with the same fervor afforded the matriarch. A thousand banners guard against foreign adversar adversaries, but to counter domestic extremism, we need to create a specialist and capable gendarmerie for the new Kieran army. The initial reforms have been remarkably successful in bringing our old banners from obscurity caused by the silence and slowly turning them into a modern army. However, there's a lot of room for improvement. If we want Kira to truly be a respectable military power once again and able to protect Kieran from the dangers from beyond, our radiance is command. Cool. Hello. Yeah, we're going to need a couple trucks. Just a few. Nice, nice, nice. Good army XP, naval XP. Interesting. Well, we should probably train them too, anyways. Why not? Do you have any artillery? Uh, no, but the National Plenum for the Provinces. Um, we have the Marines. It's a 12 combat with, and we have other Marines that are 16 combat with, so goodbye. Kieran Vanguards. So are these better than infantry? They are better than infantry, even though infantry is slightly better harder attack and defense and HP. They actually are uh, slower, so these guys are not bad. If I threw on artillery, that would slow them down. Are these guys considered special forces? They are considered. Interesting. We might use them, we might not. Because I do like having artillery on our guys. Oh, Valiants. Oh, these are support companies. Defense, Breakthrough, Soft Attack. Heart Attack, and gives you some recon. It hurts your organization, though. Trickle back in war, support protection, plus 20%. That's good. Can we add these guys on here? Valiance? Infantry equipment, support equipment? It's not bad, an idea. But the National Plenum for the provinces first. Realm changing news from Vermilion is all to come, but at least this reform came with plenty of notice. For weeks, the nation has listened with bated breath as Morin's secretariat beckoned over the details of a proposed new system of regional legislatures, the provincial diets. It has been rumored that the final law required no fewer than 500 amendments, carefully fine tuning provincial authority over everything from fishing rights to radio broadcast regulation. But at last, today, a visibly frazzled Autumn Blaze gave a press conference with an immense binder and hoof. It is. Not every day you get to spend two months talking about your finer points of forestry law and tort reform with a few hundred of your closest friends. But I'm really proud of the work that the Secretary has put into this bill, and the humility it took to admit that it's important for other kids to have a say in how the country's run. I mean, it's not as if we know everything. Now with the national plenum of the provinces bringing regional expertise to the legislature, we'll have a second opinion right down the hall. And of course, even with the plenum, we definitely can't make one law that'll make every Kieran and Fragrance happy at the same time as every Kieran and Verdant, hopefully. But provincial diets can. Well, they need to make more than just one law, they need one for each province, but... The conference was to be expected quite uh, rambling, but the nation can breathe a sigh of relief that at this latest political quagmire is over, and at the same time, the breakup of the stumps, bumping, and ballots for the upcoming provincial elections. Hopefully after these elections, Autumn can get some clearly much needed sleep. And able to prevent your diet's actions. Let's say, let no one say I have nothing and sink low in spirit, for conquered weeds all threads in the tapestry of life. fate. River Lily and I took something of a pleasure to cruise along the great Miller Flue, and I have to say it's been good to spend that time with her sightseeing the woods and hills of peace and plenty, not thinking about politics and New Yorks and New York politics. At least it was enjoyable until our ship's boiler failed and we had to make for some miserably tiny town called Light Chief for repairs. Much as I was trying not to think about politics, I couldn't help but start thinking about rural Kirio. One reads about present revolts and farmer rebellions, spree sounds, but re really, Kieran and politics have, already, have always revolved around our biggest cities. The countryside is this immense monolith that no Kieran pays any mind to until it's burning down. So I started to ask about how things were going in Light Chief and discovered that a local party activist named Song Thrush is giving a speech in a tea shop that same afternoon. Let me say, Song Thrush is the mayor possessed. She was proudly wearing a Roman Harmony Party lapel and was ready to hear a stream of cheerful vagaries devoid of substance, but no. Thrush took the room by storm. She began to explain the success of some local project to hire an ambulance boat that could visit the villages along this part of the Milliflube and bring sick here into the clinic in Lychee, but she was soon interrupted by a heckler who pointed out that the Home Affairs Bureau had originally promised enough funding to build a proper hospital in town. And that's when Thrush leapt into action, swiftly condemning the sack hecklers, grumbling and pointing out that while funding was never forthcoming, the Home Affairs Bureau was doing the best it could with, with what it had. The ambulance boat could take the sickest Kieran to Sorghum after all, and it would be the only health care that the Kieran in the villages could access. Something was better than nothing, as it were, the rest of the Kieran present, while later learned were all members of the Home Affairs Bureau, seemed reassured by her passion. 
Elijah's speech feeling strange. Elijah was clearly big enough to need a hospital, and Sorghum was in a pleasantly long boat right away. The government can barely provide for the cities, and then the more I dwell on it, there must be quite a lot of small towns like Elijah feeling increasingly neglected. Yet the Kieran here, apart from one dissenter, doesn't seem disgruntled or angry or just seem resolved. Intent to make do, and intent to make themselves until Vermilion gets around to them. There was even a fundraiser at the end of the social, and River and I both tossed in a few tales. The box said it was fun for a local soup kitchen. I suppose rural Kirio, in some way has its worse than anywhere else, but knowing that the Kirin here are organizing to make their lives better, instead of grumbling and smoldering, it's almost as uplifting as hearing that the silence was lifted. Nice. So how the heck do we do this? Stable election of the works. Enable automatic reselection of the incumbent party. Upon the end of the incumbency of the ruling party and a provincial die, they'll be automatically selected for a subsequent term. Uh, can we second a million? Okay, so here we go. Um, oh god, how many parties are there? Bonus to daily political party gain. Bonus to daily harmony support. Number of provincial diets controlled by the realm and harmony party like zero is less than seven. Because Vermilion Basin is a stronghold for the realm and harmony party, it costs 25 to take the state action. Command power for this one. Consumer goods. Research speed goes up, daily and unaligned. War support for daily supremacy. Zero under three. Takes 150 because this is uh takes uh, so much to do this. We need a lot to be a focus of patriotic renewal. Well, we try to go this path, but still. Um, circle of serene tendencies, more stability, rising fire, more population, communism, multi population, Marxist Workers Party of Kyria. Is there a map mode we can see where all the provincial diets are? That would be really handy, I think. Is there one here? That's a side development, that's interesting. We're very really quite illiterate. And we're poor. Huh. Dear race. Uh Yeah, I think that would really help us out. Uh, if there's like a map mode, you can see everything at once. Like, oh, I want to turn everything to supremacists, which you can't do, or turn everything non aligned. I think, I think that'd be really nice. Um, you know what? I like this idea. It's very smart. But in the meantime. Well, I mean, three. I think we're just going to try to keep going uh, this, premises, I guess. And we're already going down that way anyway, so. Take 75 political power to take this action. You know what? I might just spend the 150. It's a stronghold. So, what does this say? No ruling party, provincial diet. Oh god dang it. Uh Okay, so you have this one's too. So why do these why do these ones open? Then compared to the other ones, because we only have YP YKP. National Association for Care and Patriots. Right Alliance and Carrier Party. NKP production efficiency growth is not bad. Resource efficiency gain. How many resources do we have here? We have like none, so there's no point to have that one there. So we'll do that one. Um, this, this is a stronghold, so we can't do anything there. This seems like a. I guess you can't make everything you know what you want. You can't make them all supremacists. We could try. Is there any resources here? Thirty-five. Oh, that's actually decent. So. Let me go with that one. Alright, so we got quite a few states without anything there, which is not good probably, but whatever. For the ruling party plus four. Does this give us like less stability if we don't have everything like labeled there? You guys can go back and repair. It's fine to repair, I don't care. Nice. 
So that goes all their political power, basically. Interesting. Domestic. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So then we have this one. Of course, we read this one earlier. Uh, Keepers of the Balance. <clears throat> By guaranteeing the radical parties a certain degree of influence on the provincial diets, we can keep temper soothed and the political situation stable as long as we keep our promises. Let's get one and a half a day. Um, oh. Live in resources? No. If you really want to turn a supremacist, I guess this is the way to do it. More war sport, better national resource, uh, better resource efficiency gain, better production efficiency growth. Nice. We need more artillery. Guns are looking better, which is good. I'll save it just a little bit on there. It's called wetter. Oh, yeah. And then we have elections here too. Jasmine? Jasmine? Her radiance is command. If I do not greatly cherish and honor the loyalty that the thousand banners have shown to myself and my predecessors, these long centuries, uh, matriarch range time began, then there will be no need to reform them so that they continue to faithfully serve the realm in these changing times. The new standard army is not a replacement for the banners, nor is it a slight against their valiance. It's simply the acknowledgement that that war is changing and our, even our finest wars must change with it. To ensure the loyalty of the Banakim, uh, of Banakirin, Matrix appeared range on herself was delivering the proclamation of the reorganization of the armed forces into the Vermilion and Kirin army. The thousand banners of Vermilion, many of whom were arrayed before, are perhaps the most venerable institution in Kirin apart from the priesthood of the Way of Fire and the Matriarchate itself. From their time immemorial, Banner Kirin defended the realm of, on all frontiers from all threats, whether by land or by sea, be their enemies like Kirin or Zeblu. Raiders from the realm or colonists from further, further Fethizia, the banners have held, even held their own, and ever held their own. But new Kirin in the new century needs a new army, one modern, flexible, rational, and efficient. Under this new model, the old banners will be substantially reformed in the command structure, composition, and recruitment model. We'll keep their heritage intact. These new reorganized banners will form the core of the new standard army around which more specialized and modern formations will be arranged. <coughs> The laws have taken up arms and laid down their lives for realm, matriarch, and constitution. Know that the Vermilion and Kirin army will honor his past as much as it looks to the future. And f uh, forever above Vermilion, your sacred banners will fly. Rank it on help but feel that Autumn Blaze ought to have been one of them to deliver in the speech, but with the potential for disgruntling the realm's military was at stake, it was perhaps best to bring the most unimpeachable voice available. There's no sign of dissent, only a rousing cry for the matriarch. Uh, Keepers of the peace. Yeah. The balance of the realm, which has dynamic bonuses or malices to political, military, and industrial modifiers depending on the level of institutional stability. Oh, crap. So maybe we can't just do all of uh, what we wanted to do there. That was a great war. It's already finally fired. I'm just clicking around and see if any of these parts would be open and available. No resources. Oh boy. They're all them chittles coming, getting big. I wonder, can we go to one of these guys too? No. Harmonious nations and members of factions led by a harmonious government can't justify war goals against the country that not generate real attention. Oh, oh, we're still harmonious. Oh yeah. Oh wait, we got rid of oh the call from fire. Honestly? Huh. I might go with Cypress Snow then. Of course weekly stability would be nice. But then I don't, again I don't want any more uh, of this. For Rome and Constitution. Agreement for the office. Uh, the constitutional standard bears have been fraught with questions and the gossip of the mascot has been ablaze. What kind of unit needs ideological examinations? What kind of unit rejects? A candidate for excessively mar uh, matriarchist tendencies. What kind of unit needs a ride control program and stay behind guerrilla training? Uh, with each cadet failing the program and more gossip leaked to an increasingly the rabid oppressor's presence in the city, at last day a single page press release came from the military school to address our questions. 
Kira's wrath of extremist ideologies and tendencies that left unchecked, or resent a serious threat of the constitutional order that's been achieved since the end of the silence. The Office of the Constitutional Standard Bearers has been informed to monitor and investigate and, if necessary, confront any extremist groups that might perpetrate violence against the Constitution or the government of the Premier. The Constitutional Protection Brigade will soon complete the training and deploy to address concerns as they arise. The Office will also soon create civilian legal and investigative departments to assist in this mission, and various support services will also be created. The Office's mission which should not be troubled any candidate who is not intended to violently attack the principles of constitutional consultionals government. Thus, the Standard Bearers. Uh, have refused all questions or regret on the conspicuous absence of any apparent loyalty to the Matrix Superior. Oh, we got mechanized here too, and military police. Oh my god. That's kind of insane. You know what? Screw it. You guys are all going to be part of another group here. Mm, Kieran. Commander. Cautious. Cool. Let's come on to Vermilion. Direct the soul with wisdom as the commander directs her banner. 10,000 hooves may build a city or destroy one. So welcome to a strange city. I haven't been this far west before and I haven't ever intended to, but River Lily says it's important for me to see the whole realm, not just the east and north. I'm going to say the food here is strange and the Kieran stranger, but I like it, kind of. We're writing this argument about <clears throat> the same time with some news from Vermilion. Autumn Blaze and the Secretary have created a new office, the Constitutional Standard Bearers. From what I can tell, they're a combination of armored division, intelligence agency, and counterinsurgency formation. A military plan of autoblaze is not, and this kind of expansive force, which of course end up being deployed against the Nerek if any start threatening the constitutional order, is a direct distraction from a real solution to the Nerek problem. Such a distraction, in fact, that if it wasn't for news about Nerex's fire suppression attracting my attention like a magnet, the standard bears would have completely drowned out of the other news from the Vermilion. The Secretary has also established a Kieran Volunteer Fire Department to centralize and support local volunteer fire departments that have been cropping up. I wasn't exactly sure what they meant, but the paper and the papers weren't clear. Apparently my confusion showed on my face because River Lily helped suggest we if if we see if Sorghum had a local VFD, and that's how I ended up sharing dinner with a fascinating mare named Orange Blossom. From the guns the standard bears were apparently carrying, I wasn't sure what to expect from Orange Blossom, though I imagine a, a mare in homemade armor leading a ragtag group of firefighter militias in a battle against the gangs in Eryx. But her Orange Blossom was a smartly dressed and well spoken mare who had been a monk before she ran for the office of the VFD chief in Sorghum. When I started to ask her about how the VFT controlled Nerex, she shook her head and explained that the VFT does everything it can to stop Kieran from becoming Nerex in the first place. Lily told me later that I had my mouth hanging open in confusion, as Blossom explained that while the VFT did fire fires, I also tried to find to help Kieran who was stressed and at the risk of transforming. It makes a lot of sense that a monk of the way the fire would be in charge of that kind of operation. As Blossom told me about community outreach programs, counseling and therapy programs, social welfare programs, all designed to help further dis to help disturb Kieran recover peacefully, I started to get a nervous feeling in my gut. Blossom's method of dealing with Nerex seems inefficient, difficult to implement, expensive and requiring constant effort and dedication and maintenance, but then isn't that what the Way of Fire did for centuries? As the VFD a modern version of the Way of Fire's original goals, and didn't that work? More importantly, after these volunteers, Orange Blossom said the Sorghum VFD had almost a thousand members, and they could actually help Kieran keep from going Nyrick or Nyrick, then maybe we don't need to breed this side of us anyways. I'm not sure of anything, but as hopeful and friendly as Orange Blossom was, listening to her made a small Kieran on my shoulder start whispering that I might be very, very wrong. Um. Yeah, the Remdev Planning Com. Uh, the Realm Development Planning Commission is a new investment bank funded by the state, which will work to expand Kieran's industry in line with the government's uh, economic priorities. Just went to the chair, Kieran. Thank you for your service. Who's this? The New Times Express. New Times Rail Network, a level two railway connecting. Oh, Omgaren Care Corp. The Realm Lands Commission. Increased state building slots. Uh, dual track judiciary. Interesting. Oh, base, insti base insti uh, institution, institutional stability. Eight golden mayoralities. Oh, the board of elections. Uh, decreases the political power costs of provincial dance and mayorality, mayorality state actions by 80%. Oh, that's good to get. A citification commission. Oh, that's good, too. The Mystics <clears throat> Magisterial. Nice. A multi denominational confessional estate. Give us your daily bread. Oh, that's good to do too. I like that one a lot. Um, honestly, updated the national sector. We might want to go this one first. Give us your daily bread. Oh, there's nothing here. Okay, well, that's interesting. And Winter Frost is back. From focus keepers of the balance, integral to every state society civilization is a balance. The social organization of creatures is a delicate homeostasis that must be regulated lest the social organism collapse, importance of traditions, customs, and the need for a benevolent, disciplined, honest, and faithful class of magistrates. Creatures vested with authority and responsibility ensure the integrity of their social order. 
The importance of institutions and the rule of law, respect for customs and traditions, they were all bound by rules, strict prohibition on cheating, backroom deals, political violence, and coercion to get what you want. The way fire was a keeper of the balance in the past. We should continue to be keepers of the balance today, though. We have given up our roles as rulers, now the Kieran are our sovereign, but we have taken up the role of judges and magistrates. We are loyal not to any Kieran party, but to Concord, the matriarch superior, and the laws that bind us all. We see to it that morality and harmony is upheld. We strike a balance between the needs and interests and rights of the many of the millions of the Kieran in the realm, and ensure a peaceful coexistence between different groups. The Kieran have all grown up now, and they must choose their own path. We no longer rule, but they help the Kieran rule themselves and hold them accountable to each other in Concord. We must never abuse our position of power to override the laws enacted by the Kieran, for that that would irrevocably undermine our moral and spiritual authority. A parent who enforces their will over this adult child would rightfully be a tyrant, but a parent who offers wise and sage advice will forever be cherished as a venerated elder, a font of wisdom to guide those who rule over today. Within the higher hierarchy, a, ba a balance must be too struck between the guidance and interventionism. It's all about balance. The reason to, to be of the way has always been a harmony balance ever since the United Kyria in the past. We continue that proud and ancient legacy today. Oh god, never provincial diets, never with the ruling party, minimum never dies with the ruling party, before institutional stability is threatened. Impact on institutional stability, minus 42%, oh god. Number of mayoralities for the ruling party, impact De uh, diet minority synarchies, without parties without representation, plus 8. Impact on institutional stability. Institutional stability is calculated by reference to a combination of the above variables. Institutional stability is negative 82%. Effects from it, we d oh god, a weekly stability gain? Okay, so we're not losing anything. So if we lose, gain some, it seems like we'll not gain that much. Next action in state, just five local sums on Curio, division organization, uh, certain limit, political power gain. Oh, shh, Nikes. Well. Oh, is this? The Vermilion and Curian army. Defense and depth. Partisan operations by stay behind forests in the rural interior of the western Kyria will be bogged down in enemy invasion. The invaders will be forced to exchange blood for land until they are decisively smashed by a hammer of a well-organized counteroffensive. Compromising of rapidly, rapidly mobilized conscript armies built around the professional core of crack units serving as a maneuver formations on the anvil of a disruptive partisan warfare in the enemy's rear. Pull the territorials. Guerrilla strikes. Scorched earth. Left behind snipers. Deploy a pacification police. on new supporters. Number 88 banner, Roll the Rolling Thunder. Huh. Uh, number 108 banner, naval banner of the Divine Wind. Well then, a river will not long be parted from the sea, but levy and canal direct its passion to the work of goodness. Um, anything we want to do here? The Western provinces have a terrible reputation as backwater, literally, as well as figuratively. Um, but I'm no longer sure I see it that way. Maybe at the time of my visit, modernity has not yet arrived in Chrysanthemum. But it certainly already made its mark. There are factories here, and though not as many as in fragrance, there's social unrest here as well, though perhaps not as much as in fragrance either. But there have not been many reports of the mysterious fires or near transformations of the West, and part of why I wanted to come here was to understand why the red angry fire does not seem prevalent as it is elsewhere. I received my answer the moment our ship docked to a wharf covered in picket signs rather than dock workers. Chrysanthemums discontents are organized, and we found the city in the grips of a general strike. It was difficult to find accommodation, but River Lily. Helpfully convinced a local mayor running for canteen for the strikers that we would help cook and serve noodles if we could stay with her that night, and she agreed. And so I spent the day learning to make the famous wheat flour noodles of the Western Kirin, while listening to rousing speeches being delivered in the nearby square to crowds of strikers. One of the speakers introduced himself as Kindling Flash, a name I recognized from somewhere, though I couldn't place it. The speech was by far the most passionate, and yet somehow he was being passionate and asking for restraint, like he was somehow asking or calming a fire by soaking it. He started off by commending Chrysanthemum's strikers for remaining peaceful and civil, and made a very pointed comment about the lack of reported er arson since the strikers had started. Uh, clearly not an ally of Red Angry Fire's brand of revolution, or at least not publicly. He went on for a while about their demands, mostly the usual suspects, higher wages, shorter hours, safer workers, or safer work, and fair management. What impressed me the most was the fact that even with Chrysanthemum's re industry relatively underdeveloped compared to the co coasts, the working class Kieran were organized enough to put together a general strike in solidarity. It was a message that kindling flesh stretched over and over, the need for solidarity, the need to ensure that all of Chrysanthemum's workers stuck together. There was something of a committee in the square that held a meeting after speech, and with some kind of loud and passionate vote. I couldn't tell over what. But the strike didn't end, so I guess it wasn't an agreement. I did see a few sickly, uh, slickly addressed Kieran and one Griffin, who I can guess were representatives of the management, who all uh, slunk away looking dissatisfied afterwards. What I saw here in Chrysanthemum. Kieran voting and debating and demanding together to create a change without feeling the need to burn things down, obviously with a red, angry 
fire around. The solidarity here isn't a universal feeling, but listening to kindling flash speaking, I hoped it would be sooner or later. Vermilion could use a few kindling flashes as could fragrance. Also, I had a lot of fun making noodles with River all day, weird as that sounds. It tastes strange, and I don't think either of us were really good at making them, but we got nothing but smiles and thanks from the strikers we served. Not to mention, River looked pretty adorable when she tripped and landed face first in a sack of flour. I was laughing so hard I fell down on top of her. The West does have its charm. Give us our daily bread. Please. We need it. Oh, initial mechanized. That's interesting. Cool. Um, so we got that, which I actually really like, um, because it helps with poverty, a modern making us a modern society. Uh, land and labor struggles shall unite. Progressive movement. The flame of faith. Oh. So really in lowlands become a stronghold of the congregation of the common hearth. Benevolent associations. Ooh, that's good to do as well. Well, that's really good. We need more research speed. Uh, sure. You know what? We have other goals and plans, but still. I know we need to have more provinces and diets and whatnot, but like. That's serene tendency, huh? Choosing everybody to be in the same supremacist party is probably a really bad idea. Because we need balance, but uh, still. So this is the last one we can choose for this one. So we lost some political power, but it did help institutional stability slightly. Slightly. Very slightly. Which is, you know, progress. Um, along with the matriarch, popularity of Parmenas. Oh, yeah. The Remdev Planet.com. Because I want to get down here. Because we need at least one of these on each side here. At least one of these. So, increase state building slots. Oh, we'll do this one, definitely. Because. So, I'm going to procure of Rhapsody. Realm and Harmony Party. Oh. Other parties plus 100 cost. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. For the future, of course. Greater propaganda based war support plus five percent. It's not bad. We don't need. Do we need uh, war support immediately? Honestly, no. I'd rather choose one of these guys. I'll probably choose Cypress Snow just because. Do you need any more things here? Do you need more training? We are still out of Artie, which is not good. We should probably put another thing up. Already on here. Ah, humbled. If you cannot trust your spirit, tend to that first, for the heart is ever the master of mind and body. I spent the nights in the school teacher's house in a village called Clearwater. I thought it liked you as a rural curio, and now I thought again. Clearwater can't have more than 200 Kieran living here, and most of them are spread out on farms miles from the village center. This might be the smallest place that I've ever been, but even in such a tiny place, Kieran's re reopening has been false, and the school teacher's not a Kieran, but in a question, Pegasus named Silver Lining. She politely answered my many questions about Equestria, which is why its great cities were like. What a truly modern society is like, what the Princess Celestia's governance is like, but she seemed mostly to want to talk about Kyria. She told me that she'd come here from the other end of the world when she finally heard about the return of Applejack and Fluttershy's mission, and she felt a real calling to travel somewhere and help spread and nurture harmony. When I asked how she ended up in Clearwater, and she explained that she'd heard about a protest by the local peasants against her landlord, and she'd come to help and try to keep things civil immediately. I started imagining enraged Kieran threatening to go near it in front of some of the aristocrats' mansion, but apparently, when Silver had arrived, she found a peaceful picket, the most violent thing in Clearwater being a rent strike. That, Silver said, is why she'd stay. Here was a village that rallied together to make things better for themselves, but in its own harmony, not as violent revolutionaries, but as determined and peaceful protesters. Silver went on at some length about how much she admired the Kieran people, particularly praising the kind of resilience, determination, and grit that she hadn't seen anywhere else. I suppose she had a point, even in a village as small as Clearwater, the last few years since the end of the silence must have felt like a typhoon, but even I could tell that Clearwater, for all its poverty, was a happy place full of passionate and hardworking Kieran. Who was that mayor at Collegium who was proudly to propose that these Kieran should be carefully studied, screened, and controlled? Who was that mayor who was disappointed when the Collegium called out her barbarity for what it was? Who was that mayor who, that was so afraid of simple, honest peasants like these? As if at any moment they would have torched the world around her. I wish I was not the mirror I had to see in every mirror, and all I could think about is as I lie here awake, unable to look Lily in the eye. That mirror who was so afraid of losing a Kira, Kira that she had never seen, so lost in the nightmares of our history books that she never saw the richness, the kindness, and passion and compassion of a country mirror. What did a caring mirror like River, River Lily see in a heartless, dismissive Miss Kira and throw a academic like me? Nice. Very good. Um, I guess we can do a prize, the Kieran Tail. We have not actually gone through a lot of focuses, have we? Which is, you know, fine. Kieran Tail is in dire need of some discipline, sharply devaluing it and backing the new value of the gold standard will hurt the poor, but it will also attract investments and, importantly, enable the government to borrow internationally.
I guess for now. Because they're still going up, and we have a lot of here. And it helps us slightly, slightly, slightly with political power, which is not that important. But So we're here, and I don't want to lose army XP game, but I, I don't mind losing it, and some recruitable population for the consumer goods. So we'll probably go to extensive conscription next. Industry in full bloom. Nice. Build new factories across Curio. Uh, Ardent Bloom finished reading through the stack of papers on his desk, his sneer having grown increasingly pronounced as he had taken each page in. The were a government, other than a minister sitting across from him at a turn and become increasingly uncomfortable. After finishing the last page, Bloom sighed and rolled his eyes. So I'm being made the scapegoat for anything that goes wrong with Kira's industrialization, he declared, and the minister found himself stumbling over his words. You're being made chair of Kieran of the steering committee of the most powerful state corporation in Zebraca, and you're being given funding, a workforce, your own research institute, your own security forces. Bloom snorted. Everything except for a free hoof. I mean, honestly, you could have been a little bit more imaginative than binding a central planning commission to a five-year plan. Bloom turned around in his chair, looking out of the window over our fragrances, increasingly high-rising skyscape. Don't get me wrong, I'll take the job. Kira could do with some competent economic direction, but Morning Secretary has already bundled up this little commission with all the red tape they could spare. I hope my working work, work cut out for me, and, and like I said, when something goes wrong, it'll be my head, not the Secretariat's. He snorted and waved a hoof dismissively. You can go. Tell the Premier or whoever decided to appoint me that I'm glad to see a business Kieran is being put in charge of the business of business for a change. The Minister found himself escorted out of his office as quickly as he had been invited in. And who knows, we might get lucky and get something done. Nice. So what decisions do we have here? Oh god. The Realm Development Planning Commission allocates and distributes resources for the development of Kieran's industry based on the prescribed ratios of civilian, military, and maritime industry. The Commission oversees the state-funded construction of factory complexes to ensure this happens in a balanced, efficient, and coordinated manner that is responsive and congruent to the most pressing materials and needs of the Vermilion Realm. Oh, set ratio, 3 to 1. 2 to 1. 3 to 1, 2 to 1, 2 to 1, 1, 3 to 1. So how do we build into factories then? Because we ratio 3 to 1. Factories count 35, 9, 10. We cannot build more civvies. We can't build more millies. Oh, so are we disabled or abled? Are we, can we can we not build any more? Oh, no, we can still build new ones here. So how does this work? So like here, we want to build one here then. Um, I don't really understand. Is this in theory you shouldn't be able to build new ones, but we can. Okay. It's still a preview boat. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll see what happens in the future with it, you know? Long Leather Matriarch. Oh, and another thing for uh, Mayflower Bloom. Now we got 18 days, two weeks. We're still building up more civvies and more millies because I like millies and civvies and we need more uh, rubber and see more steel. Yeah, going to close. Free trade might have been a mistake, but eh, we'll see. We'll see. You can actually use an actual navy though. These guys are still killing each other off. How? It's like the Vietnam War. Literally, like the Vietnam War. Just keep killing each other down there. Fuel silos, sector, uh, vanguard. Kind of sense. Oh. Oh, yeah, I should have done this earlier. More resource efficiency gain, better consumer goods? Yes, please. Nice. Things are looking better for us, though. And for May Flower Bloom once again. To take only what is needed and lay up stores for tomorrow, an orchard may bear wood once or cherries for a century. The sea, the sea, finally the sea, I've missed the ocean since I've joined the Collegium. And looking out from the side seas shores these past few days, I've been refreshing away I haven't been in a while. River Lily's having a good time too, and we spent a day shopping along the harbor front. The recent reforms of the tail meant that our money wasn't going as far as it had been before. Not that that was an issue for me, but I could hear the grumblings in town. For example, Lily and I stumbled on a business mayor arguing with her landlord, and their bickering confirmed what I was afraid of. The vowing the tail has brought plenty of foreign business into Kiryav, and how the central government handles its debts most efficiently, but it's also run small Kiryav businesses up against the wall. This poor mayor, her name turned out to be Snowy Wool, couldn't afford the interest on a loan she'd been forced to take out to keep her restaurant open, with rates how, how rates have shot up after the reforms. The inflation is quite bad, and Snowy was hardly the only voice loudly complaining on the docks, but her particular case struck me because she was pleading with her landlord for an extension or on her rent as a matter of charity. Not for herself, but for customers who were apparently feeding at or sometimes below cost because otherwise they wouldn't be able to eat. You have more evidence that the Grand Gallop Honor had left quite a few Kieran in the dust, but also very heartwarming to know that the common Kieran are doing their best to help each other out. After this argument, the landlord grudgingly agreed to give her a few more days, approached Snowy Wool, and got to talking about her about a restaurant. 
and she explained everything about the rising prices and the difficulty that Kieran and the city were facing. She seemed adamant that if they were hungry, Kieran and Sicy, it just wouldn't be right to try to make a profit off of them, though she wasn't sure how she was going to keep her doors open. I don't know quite what came over me, but I'd never done anything like this before, but I blurted out that I could offer her a cheaper loan to get her through her until the troubles until the tail tied over. She accepted it eagerly, and I'm happy to say that I stuck to my word and made sure her money was on its way. That night, over our dinner, Lily told me that while she was a little surprised to see me spend money like that, she was proud of me. Part of me wanted to say something about how foolish I was, but I realized, seeing her smile, that I wasn't foolish at all. In fact, I started to think that if I would ever feel right collecting the interest on that loan, putting food in the bellies of Sassy's knee seemed as good as use of money as any. Absolutely. We have enough here, so I'm going to start making these a little thicker. Just a little bit. Not too much thicker. Because I can't afford as much. As much as I would like, but still. Oh, God. Oh, there it is. Better military factory. Okay, that's cool. So you lose a speed, uh, military factory construction speed, and then you just get one in 70 days. Actually, that's really strong. That's actually really awesome. Um, I'm not going to take that yet, because... Uh, we could really use it, but we're still building ourselves up anyway. And we got an extra one here, too, so. Retool the guns. And the dual track judiciary. Get some base institution. Stability. Because they're negative 77%, which is hurting us. Um, this is, uh, interesting. The work of future gardeners. It don't happen often, but on a blaze with relish a chance to share a set a cup of tea with Rain Shine, undisturbing the gardens of the palace. She could open up the other new one Karen she knew she could trust and who trusted her in her return. Could I ask you something, Autumn began, interrupting the conversation. As to do with, well, with all of it, everything we've worked so hard for. Rain Shine was certainly surprised, but she gave an encouraging smile between sips of tea before Autumn continued. The government. <clears throat> uh, the premiership, the... Consociationalism and the Secretariat. Uh, Kieran trusts in those things because they trust in you and you created them. That's how they feel anyway. I know we so, sort of created two, though those things ourselves after you made the Secretariat, but I mean, the point is, do you think the realm will ever believe in the government without their matriarch telling them to? You sign away so much power, but if your successor tried to claim it back, would Kieran really stand up against the voices of Concord itself? Ranchon took a long, deep measure of breath. Not if anything happened tomorrow, she said, but we must give the realm time. Centuries of tradition are not easily undone, nor they should be. But in a few short decades, the premier will have been born after the lifting of the silence, and they will know nothing but constitutional matriarchy. For all of your efforts, Autumn, you only have planted, uh, and you've tended the first shoots of the modern curia. It'll be another gardener who takes the fruits of your work. Autumn nodded slowly, maybe. I worry for us, though. I mean, we almost lost it all for a moment there, and we still could. We have a long way to go making the country truly whole. As much as we made it a show of you stepping back, we both know it'll be you holding the realm together for a long time until all of these wounds can heal. The realm has changed, but it still needs its mother. Gold and silver are, are as spring rains, too much or too little, each uh, bring strife. The sluice that hoards its waters nurse no field. We, who knew that a simple few greased hooves would all be all it takes to be, to be welcome in a fragrance of high society? Mention the bloom name in the city, and it's easy enough to get an invitation to anywhere. If I enjoyed being the center of the attention a bit more, I think I could want to stay here forever. And I have my cousin's generous donations at NAKP to thank for them. Hot society here in Fragrance is all buzz. The matriarch herself is visiting the city as part of the tour of Greater Providence. Wasn't sure how I exactly feel about seeing in person, but it was a fascinating feeling. For all my particular convictions about politics, when I first saw Range John in the box of the opera I was attending, I was absolutely starstruck. I really nearly missed the opportunity to meet another fascinating Karen sitting next to me, some expatriate. Uh, a stock trader, one of uh, Fickle Current's distant dysphoria connections, named Margin Call. In between uh, odd glances at the matriarch and endless parade of arias, a Margin Call and I were able to hold an interesting conversation. He trades in, in he trades in equities. Not a surprise from his name, and apparently makes quite a fortune in doing so. Uh, though he had somewhat shabby appearance for a Kieran who claimed to be so rich, and I still figure why. Marjorie calls a terribly guilty sort of Kieran. He all but blurted out his fury at the all recent news of strikes being repressed and his peasants being driven off their land for the industry that the Grand Gallop Onward has unleashed. I pointed out that his fortune comes from trading stock in the same companies that are breaking strikes and buying up land. His guilt was obvious, in which I can only assume is why he confessed two more things to me. He'd been donating generously to the Fragrance Volunteer Fire Department, which uh, is a worthy cause. I bet he like this organ department is a worthy cause. Um, but he is also funneling money and laundering some more questionable operations for the Red Angry Fire. My gasp nearly got me expelled from the opera. He quickly explained that, that he thinks the RAF, 
I should have to think that if they are legitimate enough to have an acronym, are fighting a good fight against exploitative bosses with unlimited foreign capital backing them up. When he started naming some uh, particularly cool business ventures, I uncomfortably recognized a few that my own family has a hoof in. Oh boy. Uh, oh man, I lost my place. Um... When I asked him what he thought of Autumn Blaze, he surprised me again by saying that he admired the Marin and her commitment to a prosperous career for all. After all, she was personally selected by the Matrix Superior, was she not? Blaze's apparent inexperience must play into one of the mysteries of Concord's benevolent will, he said. I think he believes that the red angry fire uh, will hold Blaze's hooves to the flame and force her to address the increasing inequality, or perhaps he is simply a stallion of two minds torn in two different directions. Marjorie Call did ask me about my own profession. And when I finally happily explained to him my work on illuminating the New York State to save Kira, he asked me how that could possibly work when griffins and zebras fight among themselves over the same things I'm afraid that Kirans do. I particularly talked at length about the prevalence of war. What good does illuminating the New York State do if such a devastating conflict can arise even among griffins? By the time we departed, Margin Call was almost lecturing me, and I think he may have a point. Kira's problems may be more economic and social than biological and full food for thought, though I do not know that I completely agree. Along with the matriarch, and a du duel track judiciary with another journal entry for maple hour bloom and then we'll eventually do eight golden mayorality so we're going to continue going this there's a lot to read here which i knew from the very beginning but if you enjoyed the video though please consider leaving a like subscribe if you're new check out my discord link and i'll see you tomorrow to see what else de other details we can get with the realm of curio thanks for watching have a great rest of your day